Good morning, Great Tens. Good morning, Great Tens, and welcome to the Great Ten Afrikaans Eat webinar for the morning. We are going to two minutes to give you for all the chances to give you on the webinar to join. We're going to give two more minutes for everyone to join our webinar. Then I'll speak to you soon. Good morning, great teens, and welcome to the Afrikaans Eat webinar this morning. I see there are still people attending, but um, I think we should carry on, otherwise we're going to run a bit late this morning. Okay, I'm just going to go through this with you again. Um, my name is Carla Lamprach, and I will be the presenter this morning. In the background, we have Surina Jordan. She is our organizer this morning. Should something happen and we have some technical difficulties, you will see that she might pop up on your screen and explain to you what will happen. Hi, if you are struggling to hear me, make sure your audio is on and that your speaker volume is turned up. That is on your device. Okay, you will automatically be muted when you join the session. This is so that we don't hear everyone's background voices. Should you have any questions, you can ask your question in the question box below, or you can raise your hand. Um, can everyone please raise their hand? It's that icon on your dashboard. Just want to make sure that you know where that is. Okay, I see there are still some people joining. Can everyone just raise their hands, please? Okay. Okay. And to download this presentation, you will see that this PowerPoint has been uploaded on your handout box, also in the dashboard part of your screen. Please use this opportunity while I go through this to download that handout. I think most of you will already will know this um, information basics page already, so you can use this time to quickly download the handout for you. Okay, 
Um, you will also find all this information in the question box below or on your right. Remember to send us questions. Attendees are encouraged to ask questions and leave comments. However, irrelevant or inappropriate comments will result in attendee being dismissed from the session. Um, I don't allow the learners to ask questions themselves. So I don't unmute you so that you ask a question. I realize that when you do that, some, some children or learners um, accidentally put up their hands. Then we think it's a question and then we unmute you and then you just explain that it was an accident and you didn't mean to put up your hand and it wastes a lot of time. So I read the questions out loud and I answer them for everyone to hear. I found that that, that works best for us. Um, I'm not going to answer questions as we go. When we're done with the lesson, afterwards, I'm going to um, go through the questions and answer the ones that I see. Sometimes I miss questions. Don't get worried. Um, after the webinar, I get sent a list of all the questions that was asked during the webinar, and then I answer them, and it gets sent out to you. So don't be worried if I don't, if I skip your question for some reason. Okay. If you did not get your, um, if, we did not get to your question. Please send an email to academics at mbuck.co.za. Questions in the questions bo bo box will be answered and made available afterwards. And um, visit the Impact YouTube channel for recordings of the session. You will find all the recordings of all the webinars you will find on that YouTube channel. Okay. Today we are going to do another course for all short story. This is this is okay. This is the last short story for for this term. So I just want to see. Just want to make this thing a bit smaller because I'm going to read to you now. Okay, I'm just going to move it there. Okay. Okay, the course for all is the Soki Dear Mariki Force. This is on page 134 of your hand lighting. If you wanted to follow with me, you are more than welcome. I think I'm just going to give you 30 seconds to just get your book if you want to and get to page 134. So that I think it will be good for you to follow, to follow as I read. So you can also hear how I pronounce the words. Can everyone just put up their hands again? I just want to make sure of something. I saw something earlier. And don't be worried if you don't have your book with you. I just think it will help you, but it's not necessary. I'm going to read the short story to you, and then I'm going to go through the questions with you. Or not the questions, the discussion. Okay, last, you will remember that um, two weeks ago when I did the webinar and the other short story, um, I went through the stuff that you need to look for when you read a short story. I'm not going to discuss them again. I'm just going to go through them with you. Um, just as a, as a little reminder. Okay, we're going to look at the title, the title, the note to the content, the characters, the bow for the verhaal. When we talk about the bow, it's the structure, the beginning, the course, the conclusion. Okay. The conflict, innerlijke and uiterlijke conflict, that's the internal and external conflict. Then the vertellers or the speakers. Um, is that the ek verteller or is it a alomteenwoordige verteller? Then the rhyme to the setting. When and where does this happen? Remember we said that there will be clues in the short story for you. You need to look out for those clues. And then acht is the keerpunt, that's a turning point in the story. Nege is the theme of the theme. That, that is the lesson of the story. What, what lesson is there that they wanted you to learn in the story? Okay. okay, now I'm going to read it to you. It's quite a long story. Um, so I'm, please try and focus as best you can. I just want to make sure if there are any more attendees joining. A few. Okay, that's fine. We can get started. They won't miss out too much. Okay. Die sokkie dier Marieke Vos. 
I am beautiful, no matter what they say. Words can't bring me down. Ek het nog altyd een ding oor een dinkie gehad. Daar is selde een dag dat my siek nie dier my kop maal nie. Die noote draai in my drome. Ek neerie die weisie saam met my eerste kopie koffie. Ek sing dit kliphaard onder die stoor. Die blauw skoolrok glij oor my kop en ek sig toe ek die rits toetrek en die materiaal oor my lijf span. Die gordel knoop waar ek ouder gewoonte op die laaste knoops gaat vast, waar my lijf druk steeds in twee wanneer ek buk om my skoene vast te maak. Nou nog net my skooltrui as laaste skans ten die verleentheid en ek is sal gereeds vir die aanslaaf van hierdie november skooldag. Wat draak jy aan sokkie toe? Vra Marekie terwijl ons vir die klaskamer staan en wacht vir die klok om te lei. Ten spuite van die examen waarin ons kniediep staan, is die graad 10 meisie sy aandag gefokus op die laaste sokkie van die skooljaar. Ek hoop nie jy dra weer swaard nie. Dis al waarin jy by die sokkie opdaag. Dit lyk asof jy altyd begrafnis hou. Sy moet haar mond van my afhou, dink ek. As ek beledig ons na haar toe begin slinger, flip in die tras, Ek loop liever. Marekie is daarom ongeskik. Wat traak dit haar wat jy aantrek? Jy steer jou nie aan haar nie, Karleen. Dierbare Tina, altyd recht om te troos. Ken jy die formules? Vraal Tina. Ek het een paar gespot, want ek is sif geleer. Die examen is nou al te lang aan die gang. Ek kon nie gister alles in my kop kry nie. Tina, jy kan nie die formules die dag voor die examen leer nie, vermaan ek. Jy moet dit in die kwartaal oefen. Ek hoop vir jou part jy het raar gespot. Ja, ja, my ma preek genoeg vir my dankie. Ek het gister in die winkel sy outfit gaan snuffel. En wie loop ek raak? Dik door red. Ek moes teen haar voorbij skier om my mooi toppie by te kom en toe krij ek snuff in die nees, letterlik. Sy stink. Sy kan seker nie al die plekke by kom wat met seep krij nie. My mond val oop. Ek voel die skoppe paard my in my maag. Daar is nie tyd om te reageer nie, die klok laai. Lekker skryf, Karleen. My kamer is een welkome lovenis na die hitte van die examen lokaal. Die vraas al was billik, ek is tevrede. Dit is my ginsteling deel van die dag, bykie ris, salig. Die skok van Tina'se woorde bly by my spook. Ek kan nie glo my beste vriendin, sê sulke lelike goed van iemand anders nie. Ma sê altyd, jy kan dink wat jy wil, maar jy kan nie sê wat jy wil nie. Waarom sal sy Dorette so beswader? Dorette is nie een vriendin van my nie, maar ek het niks teen haar nie. Sy pla my nie. Ek het al geseen hoe die meisies in die kleedkamer aan mekaar staan en weis na Dorette wat haar groot strand handdoek om haar lijf trapeer tot sy haar sportleren aan het. Wanneer ons na lichaamsoefening weer aantrek, is die handdoek altyd by. Ek weet hoe sy voel. Dorette is nie vetter as ek nie. Dan is Tina sy afleiding ons ook waar van my. Hoeveel van die anders skeer my dalk ook oor die selfde voor oordelende kamp? Mechanies trek die laaste vier blokkie chokolade by my mond in. Die opgevrommelde blinkpapier vlieg dier die licht, soos ek het vies een kan toegooi. Die les vir vers witbrood met dik botter is steeds oorweldigend. Die nieuwe huisgenoot bied nie veel afleiding nie. Ek is geen les vir die sokkie nie. Ek weet nog steen die tyd is so aand verloop. Ek is gewoonlik die middag voor die sokkie kinderlik naief, selfs opgewonde. Dink, vanavond is die aand. Ek droom vir wat ek met my haare sal maak. Beplan my uitrusting. Sien visioene van hoe ek oor die daansbaan sweef. Die eerste probleme begin as ek aantrek en die broek wil nie oor my boobene of wil nie oor my boobene nie of die hemp gaap. Dan is al die kerige grimering in die blinkbos kitsgwaard gids swaard haare verniet. Ek sien ook die nie aankomst by die skoolsaal, amal sy oor op my. Ek haal die onsekere binnenstap, die soek na my vriende, oopgesperde brilpara onder die skalpel. Ek sommer lis en gaan nie. Ek sit in elk geval die grootste deel van die aand tegen die meer met my oor afgunstig op die moriese maar meisies wat die seense aandag trek. Karleen, hoi, jou haar lyk prachtig, kom sit, ek het vir jou plek gehou. Hier is iets aan die broe, jong. Meneer Gaus het een vreemde man na die sokkie toegebring. Daar is hulle, sien jy? Tina mis niks. Meneer Gaus en die vreemde man stap verhoog toe. 
Meneer van die microfoon, sê en sê dochters, ek het vir julle een groot verrassing. Die Matrix Afscheid Komitee het het goed gedink om so lang die julle school voor te berei op julle groot aand wanneer dit een dag aanbreek. Ons sal het die Matrix Afscheid moet vir julle onvergetelike ervaring wees en daarom wil ons julle nou al aan die dans kry. Niks meer van klaar eet en dan staar na die twee parkies wat kan dans nie. O, om ons daarmee te help, sal Frans hier aan my rechterkant voortaan by elke sokkie wees om julle touwwijs te maak. Oor na jou toe, Frans, dansinstructeer, hy lyk eerder soos een rugby speler, lang atletiese bene en een broek wat soos een handskoen pas, breeë boos en hoeke geskouwers, glad nie slecht nie. Selversekerd steek Frans sy hand uit om die mikrofoon by meneer Gaus te neem. Dankie meneer Gaus, nou ja, mense, laat ons wegspring. Ek denk, ons gaan eerst probeer wals. Dis eenvoudig, dis gracieus. En as jy kan tel, kan jy wals. Kom ons demonstreer dit eers. Is hier een dame wat kan wals? Die saal is doodstil en die opvinding is tasbaar. Ek kyk rond om te sien wie die uitdaging gaan aanvaar. Amal staan soos soutpilare. Dan steek Tina haar hand huiverig in die licht. Ek het nie geweet sy kan wals nie. Meneer, ek weet vir een feit Karleen kan wals. Haar opa het haar geleer. Die saal bas uit van die lach. Ek krimp in een. Want een weise man. As meer opa sy voorbeeld volg, sal jylle nie soos een spul swapen by jylle eie met rekkas kuit rond sit nie. Karleen, waar is jy? Kom my sê, kom met ons hulle weis. Ek droom, so iets gebeur nie met ongemakkelike mollige meisies wat nooit die middelpunt van belangstelling is nie. Tina het natuurlijk reeds vir Frans gewaas wie ek is en hy stap doelgerig op my af. Die muziek begin ritmies 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Frans sy arms met die grasie waar oor net dansers beskik en Tina stamp my hart in die, in die rug, regheid in sy arms in. My voete verraai my ongewilligheid en ek volg Franse passies. Daai in die wim in die taalboek van voel of jy een laaistok ingeslik het is waar. Maar na die eerste draai begin my lijf die ritme aanvoel en die spanning verdamp. Ek buig my rug soos opa my geleer het en kyk na ons verstaarde gehoor. Die meeste kinders staan met volsla ongeloof na my. Dan vang my oog vir my rekkie. Sy lijk soos een gaar vis. Lig voet zweef ek by haar voorbij en glimlach siekies vanuit my swaak kamuflering. Die muziek sterf weg en Frans tol my vir een laaste maal in die ronde. Hy slaan sy arms om my lijf en neem weer die mikrofoon. Sien sy dochters, my werk is so pas heel wat vergemakkelijk. Hier die jong dame is veerlig op haar voete. Ek raai die seens aan om haar onmiddellik op te raak as jylle gauw wil leer wals. Kry jylle dansmaats. Ek sal rondloop en jylle help. Maestro, muziek. Christina Aguilera sy stem streel vanuit die luidsprekers. I am beautiful no matter what they say. Words can't bring me down. Terwyl ek na my stoel snap om oude gewoonte weer die danserij dop te hou, dit iemand my op die skouwer. Dis Johan Rui, ons schoolse 100 meter atleet. Hy het nog nooit met my gepraat nie. Sal jy my ook kan wees om te wals, Karleen? Pra hy. Goed. Kijk, en Amalie gaf my jylle hande opsteek. Ek het kan sien wie is nog met ons. Oké. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with a discuss discussion. I know that it's a lot. Um, there, I wish that I could, um, could explain every word that I think you might find, find difficult to you, but it's, it's quite, a, quite a long, short story, so I can't explain everything to you. I've tried to make it as easy as I can during the discussion we will have. Please make notes. Um, when I'm explaining something and you think that there's something you might not remember, please make a note. Or ask me in the question box and I'll answer you afterwards. Okay. Okay, the title. Let's look at the title of this short story. The title is The Soki. If I translate it directly, it means the, the sock. Uh, the sock. Um, it's like a sock that you would wear. 
in Afrikaans, a soki is a dance. So if we had to translate it in that sense, in context, it would be the dance. I'm going to explain, I'm not going to read it there for you. You can read it afterwards when you download the handout. I'm going to explain to you why they call it a soki. In the 1970s, when students had a dance at school, the girls were wearing um, high heels and the heels would damage the wooden floors. So they were asked to remove their shoes and only um, dance in their socks. That's why they call it a soki. And it just kind of stuck. Okay. Danny, a note. Um, look, I explained to you that when, when I ask you to, to explain the content of a short story, that is where, that's like explaining what happened in the story to a friend or to your mom. Okay. You will start at the beginning and you, would, you will say, the course for all Homer Carlina, Grotin Mais is an school soccer. It's about a girl, a grade 10 girl, and they run up to a school dance. Um, she's self conscious about her appearance. For a moment, she considers not going to the dance, but then she decides to go. Um, I'm not going to go through everything with you. Maybe I should. Maybe you didn't understand the, the story. So let's go to it. Um, then when she gets to her dance, the one that she almost didn't go to, when she gets there, she speaks to her friend Tina. And Tina says that Meneer Gais brought a, a, um, a man to the, to the soki, and they don't know who he is. Then Meneer Gais gets on stage and he says that he got um, this man, is France, France is his name. He got him in to help them to dance, to prepare for the metric farewell. Um, this France asks if there's someone that knows how to waltz. And Tina puts up her hand and says that Carlene's grandfather taught her how to dance. And he then says, okay, then she must dance with him. And then they dance in front of all the learners in the, at the Suki. And she dances very well. And then Mr. Franz encourages all the boys in the school to ask Carlene to teach them how to dance. Okay. And then uh, Johan Ray, the school's 100 meter athlete, um, approaches Carlene and asks her if he, she can please help him to dance. So that's about how the story goes. Okay, then we look at the characters. The first character, always when I discuss the characters, I start, um, I go in appearance. The first character we, we get to know is Mariki. So it's not, I don't start with the main character necessarily. Okay. I want you to do this in, in all the literature you do when you know that you need to know the characters. As you are reading through the story or the drama or the uh, whatever literature you're doing. If you see the first character, write down the name and write down everything you've learned about that character as you go along. Okay, the first character we get we get to know is Mariki. She's also a grade 10 student. She um, insults Carlene by saying that she hopes that she doesn't wear black to the soki again because it looks like she's attending a funeral. Okay, and then... Then we get to meet Carlene. Carlene is the whiff character. She is the main character of the story. Okay, she's been insulted by, by Mariki, but she decides to say nothing. This can be a sign of maturity. She is mature enough to know that nothing she will say now will help the situation and she would rather just ignore it. Or it could be that she's a very soft person. Like she thinks that, oh, if she just could say, say something to Mariki, but she is not that um, type of person. So it could mean that she's soft or that she is mature enough to know to keep quiet. Okay. She's also very shocked about what Tina, her best friend, says about Dorette. She, she calls her Dick Dorette. Um, I hope that you understood that part of the story. Tina said that she was in a shop looking for an outfit for the Soki and Dick Dorette was there and she had such a hard time trying to get by her to fetch a shirt that she wanted to take um, to buy and she smelled very bad and maybe that's why she can't maybe it's because she can't reach all the places that need soap that's what she said about Dorette it's, it's a very mean thing to say and um, Carlene was very shocked when Tina said this she actually didn't respond because she didn't know what to say she was so shocked um, it could be that it was out of character for Tina. Okay, and 
It's because Carlene is also overweight. There's a part in the story where she says that uh, Dorette is not much fatter than she is. So if if that is what um, Tina thinks about Dorette, that's probably what she thinks about Carlene as well, because they are the same weight. Um, I just want to go back here. Um, Carlene, she's very self-conscious about her body and her weight, and she's not used to being the center of attention. Okay, then we get Tina. What do we know about Tina? We know that she is Carlene's best friend, so our best friend then. Sy maak een aanmerking oor Dorette se gewig. She makes the comment about Dorette's weight that shocks Carlene. Okay. And what we know now is that um, Carlene was so shocked because it's probably out of character for Tina to say such a mean thing about someone. And you, in the first, on the first page that I, that I read to you, it says there that, I actually think it's the first paragraph, it ends with Carlene that says, dierbare Tina, altyd reg om te troos. That means that she sees Tina as dierbaar, a lovely girl, and she's always ready to comfort you. So she's a very loving, loving, kind person. Dan meneer Gaus. Um, in the story, it doesn't, says, it doesn't say whether he's the principal or just a teacher. We just know that he's on the Patrick Farewell Committee. Right. And it's important for him to to make sure that all the learners have a good matric farewell experience. That's why he brings in France. That's about all we know about him. And then we get to know France. He is the dance instructor. He's the dance instructor that Meneer Gaus um, brought in to help the learners. And he's not bothered about Carlene's appearance. And he is very um, so not, not surprised, he is um, very impressed by how good she dances. Okay, then we see there's um, John Ray, he is the school's 100 meter athlete, he is very well built, um, he's probably popular, and he asks Carlene to help him to dance. Okay, that's the characters. You can add more, you can add a lot more if you feel like there's something more that you, you, you so in a character, you write it down here. Okay, now we look at the bow van die gedig, the structure. At the beginning, remember we said in the beginning, there's two things that happen. They set the atmosphere, and that's where you get to know the learners and the, uh, the characters and their characteristics. Okay, so the atmosphere is created. We know that Carleen is busy getting ready for school. When she gets to school, she and um, Mariki and Tina is in front of a, the class uh, chatting and waiting for the bell to ring. Then what we know about the characters is we find that Mariki is, um, she's a bit of a bully. She is mean to, to Carleen. And we see that Tina is so hard. Um, so it means that she is, she has a very soft heart and she comforts Carleen. Okay, Danny Furlip, in the course of the story, there is again two things that happen. The a problem is created and tension is also created. So the problem is that Carlene uh, doesn't really want to go to the Suki. She is very self-conscious about her appearance. Okay, then the spanning word tension is created. The tension can be created when she speaks about how she walks into because she, she tells us about a previous experience of walking into the Soki and all the eyes are on her and she has to look for her friends and she uh, you kind of feel the tension. So she tells us about this and then it actually happens. It, we now see her walking into the into the Soki and looking for a friend and then Tina approaches her. And Tina says that I've, I've, um, I have a place here for you, I've waited for you, no, no, no. Fine. Then another tension is created when they, when Tina tells her about this um, strange man that Meneer Gaus brought to the, to the Soki. And then he gets on stage and he, he's introduced and all this tension, no one knows who he is, what is he doing here. And then if they find out that he's looking for someone to dance and then there's more tension in the room because now everyone's looking at everyone, trying to find out who will accept this challenge to dance in front of the entire group with this strange man. Okay, then uh, Tina puts up her hand and she says that Carlene can dance. Okay. 
Let me slow the conclusion. That is where the tension is now over or the problem is solved. You remember? So now the tension was built up. Carlene is the one that had to dance with France. And then the conclusion is that it went very well. She danced very well in front of everyone. Um, and she gets praised for how well she dances. And, and France encourages, encourages the boys to approach her and ask her to help them. Okay, so that is the conclusion. Everything went well. Then the conflict, in a, um, internal and external. The internal conflict is where um, is Carlene's a problem that she has with her weight. Because okay, so she, she feels that Tina also thinks of her the way she thinks about Dorit. Because she says that there's no, she doesn't weigh less than Dorit. So they have, are both equally fat. And if Tina says that Dorit is so fat and she stinks it because she can't, uh, the soap doesn't reach all the places, she feels that that's what her best friend thinks of her. And that all the jokes she hears in the in the girls' bathroom that people make of, of Dorit, they probably make of her too because they look similar. So that's her in, uh, internal conflict that she has is about her weight. Okay, then the other conflict in the story it says that Mariki swear. Carleen swear for by Mariki and glimlach sickies for her. It could be to make her jealous. So she explains that while she's dancing with Franz, she spots Mariki, and while they are while they are dancing past her, she kind of grins at her, smiling, grinning at her. That could be to make her jealous, to say that I am now the center of attention. Okay, then the verteller. Now you have to know, is it an act verteller or for ten woordige verteller? It is an act verteller. How do we know this? Because we see the words ek in mei. They speak about ek in mei, so that tells us it's an ek verteller. And we don't know what the other characters think or do unless Karlin is there with them. And so this whole story is, is uh, told from Karlin's perspective. She is telling the story. Danny Reimte, we know that this happens at a school because they speak about a manier in a class corner, in a metric afskite, in a school rock, and so forth. So we know it happens in a school setting. Danny Kierpent, and that is where Carlene and um, where Carlene and Franz dances, and he then compliments her on her dancing. Um, so she is no longer the girl that's just standing against the wall waiting for someone to ask her to dance or just waits for the night to be over so that she can go home. Okay, then is the current gedachte. That is the struggle that Tina Meisies met al voorkom said. It can be the struggle that teenage girls have with their, their appearance. There's a, a, people expecting to look in a certain way so they put pressure on them. So it's the struggle for them about their appearance. Um, and then the, the, the thing I want you to remember that the main idea is that a very unlikely person like Carleen, an overweight, shy, um, don't really stand up for herself girl, is very unlikely to be the center of attention at a function as big as a school socky. But this happens. So even, even the most shy, unlikely person can be the center of attention. But I mean, this kind of goes back to the current gedachte. The less, now we remember the tema is we're looking for the lesson that she learned, that we can learn from the story. The lesson is to not let your appearance keep you from doing what you love. Other people's opinion of you should not influence or keep you back. Um, they, it can be a lot of things. You can read the story, go through it again, and think what kind of lesson did you take from, from the story. Okay, now I'm going to go and see that this was a bit long. Um, but now is the opportunity for you to ask your questions. I just want to open my question box here.
I hope that you aren't too overwhelmed. Remember, as I said, if I miss, you, miss your question for what, other, what reason ever, um, do you still send it and don't be worried if I will answer it later? Sorry, I'm just having trouble. Oh, sorry, my computer is freezing. Okay. Um, how do you do your orals? Remember that it should be a, a person, a qualified person that does your orals. Um, just send an email to Impact. I know that there are people doing orals um, online. Um, me, myself, have, have assessed some, some children um, over Zoom. Um, so just send a mail to Impact and it will explain to you how you can do your orals. Uh, remember, it can't be just anyone. Um, Impact needs to approve the person that's going to assess your orals. Um, I would like to know if I raise my hand, will the arrow be green pointing upwards or red pointing down? Yeah. Um, I'm going to answer this because I had a similar problem. I couldn't figure out when my hand is up. When you put your hand up, it is green on our side. So for you to make it red, you have to press on the red again. So it's going to appear red and pointing down. Oh, I see that you couldn't see anything on the screen. I hope that that was sorted out. I've done the activity for the story already. That's perfectly fine if you've done the activity already. Now you just have some background about the story, which is very help helpful for an exam. Yes, the story is in your impact study guide. On page, oh, I did say the page. Let's go back and look at the first, at the first um, page on the, PowerPoint, it will say the page number there. Will we get the story in our exams? Um, I don't know. Remember, you have to study all the literature for term one and two for your exams, for your June exams. And for your November exams, you need to study all the term one, two, three, and four's literature. Will we get the video on YouTube? Yes, this webinar will be uploaded on the Impact YouTube channel. When will the exam start? They will, a mail will go out to you somewhere in this week that will give, explain exactly how the exams is going to work. I'm going to check on page 151. I think you're on the wrong page. Let me just go back here. Yeah? to make sure that you have the right page. 134. The story is on page 134 of your study guide, not 151. Why is there a mention of Christina Aguilera in the story? What does this add to the story? Um, it's more about her lyrics of that song than it is about of, than it is about her. But um, the f now I can give you some perspective now because remember we said that um, there will be clues in the in the short story. Now you can see when did that song of Christina Aguilera, Aguilera come out? That will give you a time more or less when this short story was written okay but it's the focus is on the lyrics and um you are beautiful no matter what they say words can't bring you down those lyrics are important not so much christina aguilera What is the easiest way to study poems? 
Make sure that you know all your beeldspraak, all your styles for gere. If you know the terminology and the, the theory part of that very well, you will be able to answer any poem quite easy. Okay. If you are able to spot um, a metaphor, if you are able to spot alliteration and assonance and um, symbolism, and if you know the reason for the structure of the, of the poem, it's study work. If you study that and you know that, you'll be able to answer most poems. Oh, I see every time someone posts a question, this thing goes up again. <laughs> That's why I lose my place. Okay. Is this the last time we will be seeing you? Is this the last webinar you are doing for Afrikaans? No, it's not the last webinar. I'm doing another one in two weeks. Do we ever get an essay question where we discuss the theme in a short story or does it only happen with novels? It's not impossible that they might ask you this, but it's usually contextual questions, meaning short questions. They won't um, ask you an essay question. Um, if they do, I think you'll have an option to answer it or not, but that's why this is so valuable because if they ask you this now, you will be able to answer such a question. I will try and look for an example, and when I answer your questions, I will try to post it there. Um, let's see, maybe I find something, maybe not, but it's very likely that it's going to be contextual questions. Just know the questions about your short stories that is in your study guides. If you know those answers, answers to all those questions, and you know this webinar that I just um, presented to you, and you know all the notes, and you know the theme, and you know the characters, and you know the conflict, you should be perfectly fine. Okay. Um, World Afrikaans exam be hard. Um, well, it's not going to be easy, because you are grade 10. Um, so it, and we have to start preparing you for, for matric. So it's not going to be super easy, but we are not out there to make you fail. We're not going to try and catch you out at, at places. Um, if you know your work well, you will be perfectly fine. Don't be stressed over it. It will be the same stuff that you've done from grade four. Remember, the language doesn't change much. And I know that's the part where you are very worried is your language. It's just every year there's add-ons. By grade 10, 11, and 12, there's not much extra that we teach you in regards to the language. So when you see a question, know that that's a type of question that we've asked you probably from grade four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine already. So if you are calm and you are well prepared, you are fine. Okay. Okay, guys, I see that I've answered most of your questions. I see that there are a lot of questions about the orals. Um, just send an email to um, back and ask them um, that they let you know how, who can ass assess those orals for you, and it will be online. Um, and then they will forward that to the assessment department, uh, which will give you exactly, will tell you exactly what to do. So don't be worried about that. Okay, guys, I see there are no new questions. I hope that I hope that you learned something today and I hope that you are comfortable with the short story. And then I will see you again in two weeks. Have a good day and good luck with your studies. Bye-bye.